You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you are listening to this podcast, you are likely a big fan of something, whether that be the Marvel Cinematic Universe, anime, comic books, etc. But what exactly is geeking out? And is there a line where geeking out becomes idol worship? Well, my friends, it's my honor to introduce us to the first episode of Systematic Geekology, where we are a priesthood to the geeks. And we're not exactly Catholic priests, per se, but we are priests in the biblical sense of being mediators, in that we have a responsibility to edify the body of Christ and bring glory to God in everything that we do. And that includes geeking out. Now, this is not some Trojan horse or some kind of trap where we have some hidden agenda, but we are real geeks looking to explore the theological and philosophical implications in things we love. And remember, if you enjoy this episode, you can help support this show so we can keep making more Christian geek content at patreon.com slash systematic geekology and what's great about each episode is this, there's going to be different hosts with great topics i can't wait for you guys to dive into future episodes and listen to what we have to share but today we have three hosts including myself and uh, me personally my name is dan stoyer i am a home health physical therapist assistant by day and a podcast host by night um i am a host and producer of the Finish Last podcast, where we strive to live like Jesus in the modern world. And recently, I've become a big fan of Groove Life Rings. Um, great company. Um, they have silicone rings. They have NFL teams, college teams. And recently, they just added Marvel. So they have rings that depict Hulk, um, Thor, Captain America, and my favorite, as you can see in my ring there, at least Will and Joe can, that's a Spider-Man ring. So really cool, really fun thing. You should check that out, guys. Uh, I am Joe, and I am a broadcaster, podcaster, um, host of Buddy Walk with Jesus. Um, and recently... I have been uh, scouring 70s and 80s Marvel and DC comics, going for some going for some deep cuts. Fantastic. Well, I am Will Rose. I am the parish pastor at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church and Lutheran Campus Ministry in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, big fan of the whole church podcast, and that's what's led me here to the systematic geekology podcast and uh, really excited to geek out with you all you know i'm a big comic book fan as well have about a 20 to 30 dollar a week pull list at my local book comic store here in chapel hill durham area and uh yeah i'm excited about this first issue of systematic geekology it's a collector's edition so if you don't go out and get your first issue now, it may sell out. It may go up in price on eBay. Later on, you might get it graded. It may be worth $3,000. I don't know. So go ahead and get your issue now. And and glad that you're here. I'm I'm geeking out on, I just finished reading, um, it was Jack Kirby's birthday last Saturday. On, and uh, speaking of 70s and 80s comics uh, with Marvel and DC, but I read... Um, a book by Tom Scioli. I think I'm pronouncing his name right, but it's a it's a biography graphic novel on Jack Kirby called The Epic Life of the King of Comics. And it goes through his whole life from birth all the way to death and all that he created, not just in the Marvel Universe, but in the DC Universe. And uh, if you don't know who J Jack Kirby is, or even if you think you know who Jack Kirby is, this book will uh, illumine uh, just his impact on just being on the Mount Rushmore of all things geeky and all the characters you love in the cinematic universe and comics. I'm, I'm pretty sure Jack Kirby had a hand in it. So, uh, so check that out. Very cool. Thank you so much. Uh, Will and Joe for that insight there. Now, as we go into our topic here, um, I'll lead it off here. We'll add set. We'll answer that first question is answer that first question first. And it's basically what is geeking out? And for me, it's you go over and beyond something that you love. For instance, I love Spider-Man. So I got my Spider-Man shirts, got the first 24 comics of Spider-Man in my house. 
when that Spider-Man No Way Home trailer dropped, I was going <laughs> bananas, <laughs> especially with all the little Easter eggs they hid in there. So, Joe, I'll let you lead it off here. Uh, what is geeking out to you? Uh, geeking out is when you find something that you're passionate about. Um, that's one of the biggest things for me that I think is is almost therapeutic in a way to have something, whatever that something is, you know, yeah, our, our things predominantly that we're going to be talking about are kind of nerdy in nature and things like that. But there's tons of things that you can geek out about. And whenever you have that passion, it's something that you can pour yourself into, obviously within reason, but um, I think it's good to be able to have those things, whatever they may be, um, and, and be able to have that means of self-expression. You know, you were talking about cheeseheads before, uh, before we got going here. I myself wouldn't slum it and put a piece of cheese on my head, but I don't. I, I, <laughs> Those it's, things it's are heavy, by the way. They are. They are. I used to live in Minnesota. I've been around plenty of cheese heads. Um, but it's, it's, it's something that you care enough about that you put yourself out there and you get passionate about it. You get, you know, sweaty about it, as one of my friends used to say. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I, I agree. I, for me, all that is, is super true. Um, it's, it's an outlet for, um, expression and discovering your identity as well. I think, um, it's, it's those things that stretch our imagination and help enlarge our world to help us see a world, um, through a different angle. So whether it's Star Wars or anime or, or comics, it's those things that, that entertain us. And help us see the world from a different angle, but I also hope that that it challenges us too. That it helps us go deeper into the questions that we're exploring in life, like who am I? Um, where do I belong? Uh, what is good? What is evil? Where where do I fit in in my own story and other stories? Am I the hero or a villain uh, in my own story? And what's my redemption arc look like uh, in in the world? So if there's anything that can help, and that could be Star Wars or sports. You know, yeah, if I'm a fan of of ACC basketball and they are they're having a down year. It's going to challenge me on where, where my allegiances lie. And so I think we can, everyone geeks out on something and uh, whether it's, is comics or whether it's a uh, sports or, or whether I have a, I have a person in my congregation who was fascinated by um, like stoplights and the engineering behind stoplights and the history of stoplights from like the beginning of when they emerged and and where they are now and from digital to everything and i wouldn't think that anybody could geek out on just stoplights but man he did a presentation at my church and by the time i was he was done with his presentation i was fascinated because his passion was expressed about how he got into collecting and learning about stoplights and how it, it literally runs our world so yeah Wow, I learned something new today. I did not know you could be a geek about stoplights, but apparently, I know, I know, I, know. I didn't either until he came and is, presented at my church. Yeah, that that is really <laughs> cool. That is fascinating. But I love that um, both Joe and Will, both of you, said that it has to do with passion. Geeking out and passion are kind of interlinked together. And I want to kind of segue this into um, just the. Second part of that question, which is when does geek culture or when does being a geek cross into idol worship? And for me personally, it's when you feel like you have to defend that part of geek culture and almost get into an argument with someone mm -hmm. um, or your or whatever you're a geek into causes strife. For example, like I was actually in Minnesota, I don't know, like five or six years ago, and I was at a thrift shop. And they had these green and yellow shoes that looked like Packers shoes. I thought it was the coolest thing. I'm like, I have to get these. So I asked the guy, what size are they? I'm like, oh, they're a size 13. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm a size 10 and a half. Those are too big. <laughs> and he's like, why? And he asked me, why do you want them? Well, I'm a big Packers fan. And the guy just started swearing at me, saying, how dare you come in this store? And I'm like, well, I can leave and not buy anything. That's cool, but. I know there are that times in my weird. life where I've gotten into pointless debates about like which Spider-Man is better, Tobey Maguire or Tom <laughs> Holland or whatever the case may be. So that's just my point where 
becomes too much of an important thing where it crosses that line and it kind of takes the focus off of what the focus should be as a Christian and that's Jesus Christ. So um, I'll let you take it away, Joe, as far as what you think that line is as far as crossing into idol worship. Yeah. um, You know, there's a lot of power behind something that some kind of IP, whatever it is, that has had a significant impact on your life. I loved what you said, Will, about um, the fact that it that these things can challenge us, challenge the way that we um, that we look at things. You know, I I have been challenged on how I view God by a Flash uh, comic book, but ultimately, the the hierarchy the hierarchy has God at the top. And there's multiple that can manifest in multiple layers. You know, if it's something that you are looking to that is more important to you than your relationship with God, and that can look like Sunday football, that can look mm-hmm. like um, spending your spending too much money on comics or memorabilia or whatever the case may be, where every single bit of who you are is getting poured into this you are absolutely crossing the line when it uh, at that stage of it the other half of that in the comics world uh, there's a big big problem of gatekeeping of people mm. that are like oh, no yeah. this is the best the best version of x y or z this was the best time period of comics you can't like this if you like this and all of this other nonsense when you when something whatever that something is it could be something that you're uh, some kind of ip that you're that you're passionate about it could be a, a hang up you know sins can take a multitude of of forms but if it's something that is pulling your heart away from the cardinal responsibilities that we have as Christians, then you, you the 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 hierarchy has become has become skewed. Right. So you mean to tell me that toxic fandom isn't only in the church? <laughs> there are other places and organizations that have toxic fandom in them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think like just as we said, everybody geeks out on something. I think everything's in danger of becoming an idol uh, in the in the same vein. So uh, no matter what, um, you know, I I love my kids, but even my kids could become an idol and be a distraction of like a relationship with God or or my my joy of Star Wars. I could go down a dark dark path of anger and fear when it comes to the sequel trilogy and my expectations that were shattered or not uh, become the idol that is shattered uh, on the floor. So what anything to become idol an idol is really just anything that distracts us away from God. There's a reason that the first commandment, you shall have no other gods and that everything else follows underneath that, that number one commandment. So um, I, I remember also being in, in college, I grew up on the beach, grew up surfing, and I was surfing competitively. And I wanted to make the the college surf team, and and I was like, oh, maybe maybe one day I can take this even further. And doors just kept closing and closing and closing along the way. And and part of me, when when I was praying about it, was like, maybe these doors are closing because this is too important and get in the way of where God is calling me to be um, and use my gifts in this world. And once I kind of let that go, uh, and those and stop you know, beating my head against a closed door, other doors started opening the way that surfing could become a ministry and a way, uh, a way of conversation and using those gifts to edify the church and, and my own spirituality. So I think the same way with geek culture and pop culture and, and these heroes and stories that we love so much, do we, do we love them so much that they're the number one story and God's story? Uh, it gets in the way of God's story rather than illuminating God's story in our lives. I I agree with what both you guys said. It's just it's so easy to kind of take God's story, put it off to the side, sit, and say, "No, this is important. This is what we should focus on." And I'm going to bring up a really hot topic here. I've seen that sometimes happen in the church, especially in the past season with COVID going on, and that mm. church has to be this. If mm. church is not this, then then you're not a Christian per se. And I know one of my 
marital counselors, um, he had someone in his life who was AOG, and he thought Baptists weren't Christians. Like, there's no way they can be Christian. They they don't. They're not as vocal as us. There's no way that can be true. And what's funny is I wish I could talk to this guy because I was raised in an AOG church while going to a Baptist school at the same time. So it'd be very interesting to learn what he would have to say. But I bring that up because there's just this issue going on in that the only place you can worship God is in a church or that's the only way you can mm. truly do it. And I know with my church, um, I have a church called Bruce City that I that I attend in downtown Milwaukee. And during the summer, we do something called the church in the park where we actually go to a park and we have our service there. And what's so cool about it is that random strangers just start walking and they sit and watch what we're doing as far as our sermon, the worship, all that stuff. And we had a sermon about anger. And there was this couple that just sat there and listened to it for a half an hour. And then one of someone from our prayer team came over and said, hey, what's going on? And we actually got to pray with them, which was just super cool and said, I needed to hear that today. Thank you so much for sharing that. So sometimes we keep these things in a box and that if we if we go outside of that and to me, that can be an idol in some way or following a certain set of rules can be an idol and it can just limit us to what really God has in store for us, and which is way bigger than we could ever imagine. When you say AOG is Assembly of God, is that? Yeah, what Assembly of God. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, yeah, Jesus had a way of exposing idols, right? When he was walking around with it, and it wasn't just like people bind out, bowing down to statues of Zeus. They were, there were certain tra- traditions and, and, um, uh, aspects of the religion that they felt was more important than, than God, um, God's self. So I think that God, Jesus has a way of exposing those, those things for sure. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, it, if you look back to biblical times and there's nothing new under the sun, we've always seen some version of, to use this, this phrase that we've been throwing around gatekeepers within Christianity Mm -hmm. that you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to practice like this. You have to worship like that. And we see over and over and over again, um how how that kind of approach somehow somewhere along the line conflicts elsewhere with with scripture and and i think that there's a lot of aspects of that that have had a big old spotlight shined on them because of the last 14 plus months you know what i mean at yeah. least on the the current iteration of what oh, that yeah. looks like. Yeah, I would agree with that. And speaking of scripture, I want to bring this back to the Bible. I want to bring up a doozy of a reference, um, 1 John 5, um, 18 through 21, that it has to do um, with idol worship. And I'll just read that very quickly. Um, it says, We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, But he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. And then it says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. And I brought up this really interesting quote from Bible.org that kind of described what's going on. And it says, Idolatry is making up your own God as a substitute for the one true God who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ. The false teachers in this passage were just doing that. They were offering a false God of speculation, not the one true God of revelation. So John's final words are a warning against adopting the errors of man-made religion. And then because of that, That whole verse, the whole verses sum up pretty much say, because of what we know about our relationship with God, we must guard ourselves from idols. And I just think it's so paramount that something written 2000 years ago still applies pretty much in John's warning, just about not going that extra step and replacing what God has already put in there for us. Yeah. Yeah. 
you look at if you take a look at Matthew five through seven, the Beatitudes, right? Um, it, a lot of times that gets preached as um, things that you should strive to be, things that yeah. you should strive to do, things like that. And in that same kind of way, if if we abandon the striving, if we abandon um, trying to put on Sunday best or or anything like that, and we engage in purposeful, intimate relationship with God, realize that that the kingdom, that's the kingdom. That's participating in, in the kingdom of God. You know, yes, the kingdom of God is heaven, but it's also here. There's a present tense to it. And so even the cleanest of clothes can still end up as rags if it's not um if 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 it's just if it's all if it's all a character if it's all if it's all for for show so these things can these idols can look so many different kind of ways but i go back to matthew 5 through 7 because there's a cause and effect action here right when you read right. those chapters you see, okay, if I, if I am engaging here, if I am engaging with God, if I'm living purposefully every single day in intimacy and relationship with God, each one of these things should be the byproduct. Each one of these things, that's the effect. It's not what we're trying to be. It's a byproduct. And if that isn't what's happening, then, then some, something's off, you know? Right, and I think that's why it's important that it's, uh, it's done in community. That that faith isn't done alone by ourselves. That and that the cool thing about um, pop culture and the geek verse is that it can be a great place where we can connect with others and, and a place where we can belong and bond with others and grow in relationships. And so that's the importance of the community. We don't do faith by ourselves. We do it in a church or or. A, uh, a, a community of faith so that we can hold each other accountable and, and, and learn from another in the same way in, in the geek first too, that whenever we're geeking out on things, we can, we can challenge one another. And if, if one of us has taken it too far or become a toxic or it's becoming an idol, uh, we can, we can help each other and hold each other accountable in those areas um, as well. Child. Yeah. I love that so much. And I love, Joe, that you brought up Matthew 5 through 7, because that's what I've been kind of reading on my own personal time. So it's kind of funny how it's a small world. And <laughs> I just love the one verse of the Beatitudes where it's Matthew 5, 6, where it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And I know with this geek culture thing, um, when some things get postponed or some things we want to watch like a certain movie or something. It's something that we can strive for thirst and hunger for. And when it <laughs> comes, we're like, Oh, that was great, but it doesn't really fill us. We think it might fill us, but it really doesn't. I mean, we just, I just came from, I'm a huge basketball fan as well. And my team, the Milwaukee Bucks didn't win a championship in 50 years. They just won it. 65,000 people outside the stadium. Really cool to see. But right after the championship was over, people said, well, let's win it again next year. I'm like, let's enjoy, let's enjoy what happened now. And so often we just focus on what's next. And and especially with this thirsting and hungering after righteousness, if we truly did that the same way we strived after the things we love in geek culture, can you imagine the differences we can make? Just not, not in just our own walk, but in people around us. It's just really exciting to think about. Yeah, we see today, um, I, it's called the Netflix syndrome. A lot of people call it yeah. where we, you know, mm. you, you just want to binge and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Um, I, even even with the Bible, and I know this is going to sound a little a little controversial at first, but even binging the Bible can become a stumbling block. You know what I mean? That's I don't I, that the whole read a Bible, read the Bible in a year thing. No, I agree with you. Compute with me 
because <laughs> there's no thoughtful intentionality behind that. You it know turns what I mean? into if a checklist. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And I, I think that that's, you raised a very good point in talking about that these are these are all things that we can strive and want and desire and be hungry for, but ultimately, whatever it is, and I know a lot of times this comes up with with like stuff like drugs and alcohol and substances and things like that. But even with your favorite TV show or your favorite band or your favorite author or whatever the case may be, all of these things, regardless of um, how virtuous they might be, are not going to replace having a thoughtful, intentional relationship with God. So there's there's this. There's this line that takes place that we that we as Christians, I think, especially those of us that are prone to, you know, geeking out about things or getting passionate about things or anything like that, that that we can kind of hold ourselves to like, okay, am I binging this beyond the point of being reasonable? Is this taking is this taking precedence over god and and relationships and and different things like that yeah, i think the key word there is intentionality i i like i like that word and and really what we're hoping to do with systematic ecology is is to be intentional with our fandom and what we're geeking out on to allow these things uh, not to become idols but to help us go deeper into understanding who god is who we are in the world around us so so that intentionality slowing down with our our geek them, our, our, our pop culture, the things we really uh, geek out about to help us draw us into those stories and not just have it entertain us, uh, but also have it have it shape our identity and our stories and, and how we understand uh, God in the world around us. So I'll share a quick story. I, I lead a, um, a God Loves Geeks book club here at the church. We read a graphic novel or go see a movie and discuss it. And it's like a book club, except around and we lift up the philosophical and theological themes within those. But um, from that, I've been able to get to know my, my comic book store and they run a comic con and I, I did a panel on finding God in comics. And I think I've shared this in other places, but um, there was someone who attended that panel and I could tell she was dressed in red. So I don't know if she was like the Scarlet Witch or Little Red Riding Hood. I don't remember. Uh, but I just, she had a, she cosplay something like red. And then later on at the end of the day, after going on the floor and picking up some back issues and, and meeting some creators and authors, I um I was going down the escalator and I ended up being like right beside her. And I was like, oh, oh, hey, I, I saw that you were in the panel today finding God in comics. Um, what did you think? And, and she looked at me honestly and said, um, she goes, I didn't know I could be both. And I said, what? She goes, I didn't know I could be a geek and a person of faith. So thank you for giving me permission that I can be both. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, you know, that that if if the whole part of what all I do is just for that moment for her to be able to see it, that permission giving that it doesn't have to be either or. I think the idol, the the rigidness of our or is like we have to choose one or the other. Um, but it can be both. I can be a geek and love and be entertained by these things, but also a person of faith. And so in the midst of this community, like systematic ecology, it holds us accountable so that we don't lean one far to the other or become so either or that we get stuck. Uh, but it helps to kind of the more nuanced and, and how can I be a both and as a part of my life and identity and, and how I navigate the world. Wow, this is great conversation. I love what both of you said. I just think I've even got more of an understanding what geeking out and idol worship is. So thank you so much both for your input. And I think if you're ready, Joe, we could go into wrap up if you want. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah. um, recommendations from the geek world. There is a comic book series coming out currently called The Last Ronin. It's uh, kind of like a darkest timeline Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles story. Um, it is a bit more adult themed than it, it skews closer to the um the eighties cartoon than or the eighties comic book rather um but the storytelling and the character building that they are doing for these characters that have been around for decades 
is really, really out of bounds. It has been um, a while since I have seen a company come in and just add a new layer onto um, an IP that has so much history behind it that I would definitely, it's still an ongoing series and that's a, it's a mini series that I think is going to be six, uh, six issues in length. Um, and, and so most, most comic book stores should have the first several or they're, I, I heard that they're going to make it into a, um, a hardcover once, once the whole thing is, is done, but definitely one that I would suggest uh, picking up. Yeah, if you're familiar with like the Dark Knight um, from the '80s, uh, the the older, grittier Batman series from Frank Miller, this is like the Teenage Mutant Ninja. Tur- the The last run is the Dark Knight version of 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 the their Turtles, and um, it's like a big magazine style. So it's not like a smaller comic. It's like right. a big kind of magazine prefix. And oh, that's cool. Kevin East Kevin Eastman's doing doing some good stuff. And and I met him at uh, NC North Carolina Comic Con, and and he's like a person of faith too. Like he he attends church with his family, and he might be kind of cool to reach out to him once that series is done and see if uh, Systematic Ecology could get a get an interview with him and and share share his take on on that story and also his faith it would be cool. That would be cool. So if he's listening to this, Kevin, we'll 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 interview you uh, <laughs> about. <laughs> well, I know I'm a big fan of the turtles in general, especially Michelangelo because he's the party dude. So thank you for sharing that, Joe. I'm, I want to look into that now. So I think uh, before we go here, um, just so that we can share our information of where you can connect with us. Um, um, for me personally, um, I have a Facebook page called uh, www.facebook.com slash finish last podcast. Um, also a Twitter, um, at finish last pod and Instagram finish last podcast as well. I, I can find me over at, um, buddy walk with Jesus.com also on Facebook, um, uh, at buddy walk with Jesus. Cool. I'm uh, Will Rose, and I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and and I do have a, a God Loves Geeks page on Facebook that you can like, uh, where we we throw around memes and, and recommendations as well, what to read. out. I'll, I'll share a quick recommendation. I'm I'm a big Marvel head, so I collect a lot of Marvel comics. I like DC as well, but I I started reading Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow by Tom King and uh, Bill Quist Evely. I think I'm saying her name right, but man talk about the art and the story is super good so if uh um just a fan of good storytelling good art but also in the the superman supergirl universe it's a it's a great read so i would highly recommend that one uh to read and and look forward to more conversations in the future on this and and other places yeah that that book is one of those books it's kind of i i equate that that book in the same um in the same league as something like kingdom come or something mm-hmm. along those lines where it's just it's beautiful you know the the Gorgeous. storytelling is also very good but just spectacular art- artwork and i wasn't really familiar of her until this book and i was just like man where can i find more of what she's doing it's it's really good really really good beautiful so tune in to uh the next episode where we're going to be talking about why it is that so many christians absolutely adore Lord of the Rings, but hate and vilify Harry Potter with hosts Brandon, (laughs) Dan, and Joshua. Uh, You can check us out at our website. It will be in the description. Let us know what you've been geeking out about and what we should be geeking out about. And remember, we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.